In this video, we are going to talk about simple interest. Simple interest is basically uh, money that is earned or money that you have to pay back, and it's always based on the principal only. We're going to use a circle method for this, just like before in previous sections. However, we're gonna have a slightly different circle. We're gonna have I for interest, And this will always be a dollar amount, how much you have to pay to borrow money or how much money you earn because you've deposited money into a bank account. Then you have P, which is the principal. And that's going to be a dollar amount. Then you have R, which is the rate, and that's going to be a percentage. And then you have T, which is time, and time will always be in years. Now to use a circle, it's gonna be just like we did in the previous section, where this line right here where I'm highlighting blue would be division, and this line here and here will represent multiplication. If the time is given to you in months, in order to put T in on the circle, it has to be in years. So if the information in t for time is given to you in months, you have to change it to years. So to change months to years, you're going to take the number of months and you're going to divide by 12, and that will change it into years. If you're given days, then there's two options. If you're doing exact interest, then you want to change days to years. You're going to take the number of days and divide by 365. We're not gonna worry about leap year. If you're asked to calculate ordinary interest, that is what a lot of bankers use and they don't consider um, there being 365 days in a year to make it simple so that we don't have to worry about which months have 31 days and which month has 30 days or even February, our special case, they just make an estimate that every month has 30 days. So they take 30 times 12, which is 360 days. So a lot of times bankers just estimate that there's 360 days in a year so that they don't have to worry about all those different number of days depending on what month you're in. So if you're trying to calculate ordinary interest and you want to change the number of days into years, you're going to pretty much do the same thing, but when you take the number of days and divide, you're going to divide by 360 instead to change it to the number of years. Now, a way that I remember which one is 360 and which one is 365, it's just one of those silly things that help you remember. I think of ordinary has an O in it, and I think of 360 has a zero in it, and I associate those two, so I think ordinary with the O makes me think of 360 with the O at the end. Okay, so let's do the first example. We're gonna use our circle. So we have interest principal, rate, and time. So the first example says Hope Slater borrowed 40000 for her office furniture. The loan was for six months and at an annual interest rate of 4%. What is Hope's interest and maturity value? So since she borrowed 40000 that's going to be her principal. 
The principle is always going to be your initial value, whether you're depositing the money or whether you're borrowing the money. Then the interest rate is your percentage that you either have to pay back or that you earn. And that's going to be 4%. But remember, when we do our calculations, we want to write it as a decimal. Now the time is given to us in months. When we do our calculations, we have to change it into years. So when we, if we scroll back up, to change months to years, I'm going to take the number of months and divide by 12 to change it to years. So I'm going to get 6 over 12 years, which if I reduce it is a half a year. Okay, and what we're looking for is the interest. So I'm going to put all this information in on my circle. So my principal is 40000 my rate is 0 0.04, and my time, remember not to put 6, because that's the month. For T, we're going to use years, so that's a half, or if you want to write it as a decimal, you can write it as 0 0.5. So I'm going to multiply, since everything that I know is separated by the multiplication line, to find my interest, I'm just going to multiply everything. So my interest is going to be whatever I get when I take 40,000 times 0 0.04 times 0.5. When I multiply that all together, I'm going to get $800. So basically what this is saying is, for Hope to borrow $40,000, she has to pay $800 in interest. So in the question, we have to figure out the interest and the maturity value. Now the maturity value, and I'll abbreviate MV, that's the total amount. So it's the amount that she borrowed plus the amount of the interest. So that's the principal plus the interest. So when she goes to pay back the loan, she's going to not just pay back the 40000 that she borrowed. She has to pay back 40800 Okay, the next example says, let's use the same example again and assume that Hope borrowed $40,000 for 18 months. We're going to use the circle. We have the interest, the principal, the rate, and the time. So we're using all the same information as the previous example. So the principal is going to be 40000 again. The rate is going to be 4%, which we said as a decimal is 0 0.04. But this time, we're doing 18 months for time. Now we have to change that into years. So in order to change months into years, we have to take 18 divided by 12, and that's years. If I put that in as a decimal, that would be 1.5 years. Okay, so in my circle, I'm going to put 40,000. 0 0.04 for the rate, and then for the time, remember to put in the number of years, not the months. So my interest is going to be whatever I get when I take 40,000 times 0 0.04 times 1.5 because everything I know is being separated by the multiplication lines. When I multiply all of that out, I'm going to get 2400 So what that means is for her to borrow the $40,000 over 18 months versus 6 months, instead of paying $800 to borrow, it's now going to go up to $2,400 to borrow that money. So the maturity value 
is going to be the principal plus the interest. which is going to be 42,400. Now, in the next example, we're getting into the number of days instead of using months. So, in this example, it says on March 4th, Joe Banks borrowed $50,000 at 5% interest. We want to calculate the exact interest, so that's the key word here, and the principal that's due on July 6th. What is the interest and the maturity value? So we're gonna use the circle. Okay, the principal is the amount that he borrowed, that's the starting amount, which is 50,000. The rate is 5%, if we write it as a decimal, it would be 0 0.05. The time is not directly given to us, but we can figure it out. We want to figure out how many days are between March 4th and July 6th. Now, there's a page in the back of your student handbook that has the days of the year on it. You can use that sheet with the days of the year in it to help you figure it out. So you find March 4th. And then you go to July 6th and you figure out the number of days between by subtracting those two numbers. When you do that, whether you use um, your hands or you look at a calendar or you use the sheet, you want to figure out the number of days between March 4th and July 6th. So the number of days, once you figure that out, you'll get 124 days. Now, because the problem is saying we want to use exact interest, when we switch this to years so that we can put it in on our circle, we want to make sure that we divide by 365 because it says exact interest rather than ordinary. Okay, so to change days into years, I'm going to take 124 days and divide by 365, and that will give me the number of years. So on my circle, I'm going to put in my principal is 50,000, my rate is 0 0.05, and my time is 124 divided by 365. Okay, now remember not to put in 124, you have to put in the number of years, which is the 124 divided by 365. That's less than a year. So to find my interest, I'm going to take 50,000 times 0 0.05 times 124 divided by 365. And I'm multiplying everything because everything is separated by multiplication. When I multiply that out, I get 849.32. So that is the amount of interest that Joe is going to have to pay back when he pays back that loan of 50000 So the maturity value is going to be the total of everything together. So it's going to be the principal plus the interest which is going to be $50,849.32. That will be the maturity value. Okay, last example. We're going to be doing the same thing, but we're going to use ordinary interest now instead. Okay, so the principal is 50000 the rate is 5%, which is 0 0.05. And the time that's given to us is between March 4th and July 6th again. So that's still going to be 124 days. And again, you can calculate that however you want. Um, but I would definitely suggest using that back page of your student handbook. That will be really helpful. Because the time is given to us in days, we have to change it into years. 
Now, because the problem says we're going to use ordinary interest, this is what most banks use, and they just estimate that there's 30 days in a month, which means 360 days in a year. So we're going to take 124 divided by 360 to change it into years. So now we're going to put all that in the circle. I'm going to take 50,000 times the rate, which is 0.05, times 124 over 360. And this is all separated by multiplication. So to find my interest, I'm just going to take 50,000 times 0 0.05 times 124 over 360. And that will give us $861.11. One thing that I would really stress is when you're putting this in on your calculator, I would put that in as 124 over 360 rather than calculating that first, rounding it as a decimal, and then doing the calculation. Because if you start rounding too much, it's going to throw off your answer. So I would definitely keep that as 124 over 360 and wait to round until the very end. Because if you keep rounding intermediate steps, there's going to be a big enough rounding error, then your, your answer is going to be wrong. Okay, now if the question asks for maturity value, that's going to be the principal plus the interest. So that will be 50000 plus the interest, which is 861.11. And that's the principal plus the interest, which would give you $50,861.11.